show us something very cool. Yes. That I'm upset. It's the first time I've ever been like, I don't want an iPhone anymore. Here to but show just the temporarily. Android app. Just temporarily. I want my my iPhone back at the end of the conference. You have an iPhone schedule, or I mean an Android schedule app for this conference. That's right. So Peter K, sorry, I forget your last name, from the open source lab mm -hmm. at the Oregon State University wrote a schedule app. Okay. Uh, and you probably can't see What's that. What's it called? But uh, it's actually just called OS Bridge. OS Bridge. So if you go to the marketplace and search for OS Bridge, you mm -hmm. will find it. And it's the, it's the updated schedule. Right. So it queries the website every time you open it, more okay. or less, and pulls down the schedule. So ping, ping. it's always up to date. OK. Yeah. Uh, everything's color coded. So there's a piece that I added to it. Um, you look at a detail for a schedule and mm -hmm. you hit the Foursquare icon and it jumps you into the Foursquare app, except when it crashes. That's weird. Except when it, oh, there we oh, go. Oh, there we go. Okay. No, weird. No. Wow, weird. It works anyway. usually. Yeah. <laughs> there's really bad connectivity in this particular yeah, corner of the room. Um, so it, then it just takes you to whatever room you're in or wherever you're yeah. in. Yeah. So I made a Foursquare venue for every room in the building uh -huh. and people can just check in there. Yeah, I know. I accidentally checked into a room earlier when I was just trying to check into the Mark building, and I was like, oh, okay. I'm not there. <laughs> What's going on here? So uh, it's great. It's uh, online, always in my pocket, saves paper. Mm -hmm. Definitely does. It's we, been working well. We've had a lot of paper discussion today. Oh, yeah? Yeah. We, with the with the Ian talking about uh, slides and, and paper handouts, and I said we don't do those in Portland. Yeah, no, well, we can avoid it. There's yeah. a really nice paper schedule. So why did he, and maybe we'll talk to Peter later if he's not avoiding me, <laughs> uh, why did he choose to do this? Is it just something he needs? It just need? came out of the blue, you know, four, week, or four days before the conference started, he yeah. announced that he had this app. And it reminds so, me of South by Southwest. Did they do a similar? Well, app? there are, I don't know if it was, so, there. yes, there are several South by Southwest scheduling apps. Oh, yeah, Sched, for the iPhone. But there's one specifically for the iPhone, yeah. Right. That I had. I actually I deleted it because I'm not going to use it until March. Yeah. I didn't feel, and I figured that by then it'd be enough. So yeah. Well, and the uh, open source bridge software, the website uh, is open conferenceware. Yes. Which is you know generic open source project that anyone can use. Yeah. And so this phone app is basically one step away from being the Android client for open conferenceware, and not just for open that's source fantastic. bridge. No, that's fantastic. Yeah, every so, every conference should have yeah. a smartphone. And now they can. Still smart, is it still they, smart they're still phones? smartphones. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They're like super on steroids smartphones now. But. Yeah. The other, you know, like they're feature phones that are the kind of the dumb ones. Okay. And smartphones. Okay. So every conference should have a smartphone app. Yes. And now they, they should. And now they can. And now they can. Because it's already on GitHub. Uh, it's already open sourced. All right. So, so tell them once again where they can find you on the net. Uh, Don P. Don P. on Twitter. Uh, GitHub.com slash Don P. Don P. Or donpark.org, right? Oh, uh, that's right. Don yeah. Park, that's I've had you on too many times. All right, everybody say bye to Don. Thank you. Thank you, Don. But he hasn't learned to point because he's a really well mannered young man. And apparently, he listened when he was told that pointing is not polite. In production, pointing is good. He could use like the open palm thing. We're taught that like when you. That's. Yeah. You want to try that instead of pointing? He doesn't have a microphone, and I think he's about to turn colors. I'm not sure. He looks like he's about to, yeah, get a little flushed. All right, let's just start over. I'm Tammy Chaos. We're still at Open Source Bridge Day 2. We've got David Corden from Facebook, who's not speaking. I'm not. I was sad. I was looking at my schedule. I was like, oh, look, there's no. I actually asked them if you were going to be here. It was someone who didn't know, and they said he's not on the speaker list. But there are three awesome people from Facebook right. speaking. So who's from Facebook? Um, so we have Bob Baldwin, he's one of our front-end engineers, and he's talking about a technology called XHP, which is a plugin for PHP, which helps you avoid cross-site scripting attacks, and it basically makes it so that when you're writing PHP, there's a better understanding of where is different data coming from, what are the variables, and sort of making it easier to develop PHP in a safe manner. Um, we have Haiping Zhao talking about hip-hop for PHP, which is... Um, an open source technology we released a few months ago that transforms PHP into C++ and then compiles it yeah. and produces a binary, makes it, uh, at least for us, much faster, use less resources. Um, and then Tom Cook is doing a talk on a day in the life of operations at Facebook. So mm -hmm. really giving sysadmins and other operations folks a better idea of what is it like to run a really giant website. Because it's, it's not even a really giant website. I mean, it's like a giant website times a million. <laughs> how many how many users? Uh, f over 400 million people use Facebook every month. 
That's crazy. All right. It's fun. It's I mean, no, it's fun. Like from a technology perspective, it's, it's absolutely it's, amazing. It's amazing. And then I'm I've been involved. Well, it's hard to say that I've been all that involved because other people have been helping. But mm -hmm. um, setting up a startup crawl That's Thursday what night. I was going to ask you. So startup crawl is uh, Facebook, Urban Airship. And Tap Lister? Uh, yeah, Tap Lister's providing beer. Um, we're bouncing between the offices of, of Urban Airship, mm -hmm. Jan Rain, Puppet Labs. Mm -hmm. um, we're starting out at Kells Irish Pub, mm -hmm. um, which uh, Facebook's buying beer for for a while. Yay! And then ending up on the roof of Wyden and Kennedy's building. Nice. Um, which is supposed to be an absolutely amazing shine. space. Rain or shine. Hopefully it's shine. I have my flip flops on, trying to bring back some of my Bay Area weather <laughs> for my hometown. Actually, Bay Area weather is kind of. Okay, fine. <laughs> I, East Bay I, weather. Okay, How's that? I grew up in California too. I know that there are some parts that are not <laughs> quite so sunny. Yeah. All right. So st is tomorrow at six thirty? Uh, starts at six, six? tomorrow at, at Kells. Six. Yeah. I was telling them six thirty so that we could get all free beer. Oh, I see. Sorry. See? Six thirty tomorrow 30 at Kells. Kells. That's the way it works. And what's what's the what's the point of it? I mean, is it just so that we can all go play and hang out? I mean, I think there's definitely that socializing piece to it. Mm -hmm. Conferences like these are really great when you're going and meeting a bunch of people and talking to people. It's not just the scheduled talks themselves. Yeah. Um, but I mean, also go and expose people to more of what local startups in Portland are doing. Mm -hmm. um, there are like Portland has a pretty amazing startup community, as as you know. Yeah, we do. Um, and so going and giving more people, especially people from out of town, exposure to what's going on in Portland um, is a really good thing. Mm -hmm. I would tend to agree. So is each startup going to give a little, is it just, hey, this is where we are? Or are they going to give a little, hi, this is what we do? Yeah, I think that's sort of up to each startup. I imagine you'll get to their office, they'll probably like they'll have beer, they'll have some snacks, they'll mm -hmm. probably have people floating around. Hopefully they like do cool demos or something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. We're yeah. giving like them like some framework, fill their offices with a bunch of people. Mm -hmm. See it. what happens. It's like a little it's a bunch of little mini lunch two but with beer instead of lunch. Yeah. I yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, I do too. I think it's beer good. Beer 2.0. Hmm. Beer 2.0. So if I don't drink beer, I'll figure out something else to do. I only think, drink beer in Texas. Why Texas? I don't know. Because I. Drink some Lone Star? I believe it may have been Lone Star. Yeah. yeah. It tastes like water. Yeah. yeah. So I've noticed, and, and this has been discussed, that when you have a conference in your hometown, mm -hmm. you tend to go to your conference and then you kind of head home and do whatever you're going to do. But when you're in a conference out of town, you're out, I mean, you know what I mean? You're out a lot more, you're a lot more likely to socialize with people, whether they're uh, from your, from people that you see every day or not, you're a lot more likely to go and have that social aspect when you're out of town. Yeah. Do you think that, you have to go to a lot of conferences. I think that's true. I mean, most conferences I go to, or most of the ones I really enjoy aren't in the Bay Area. Mm -hmm. um, partially for that reason. Like, I, I think some of the most interesting events are ones that are sort of in areas that are a little bit uncomfortable or that just like aren't um, giant cities. Yeah. And so you spend a lot of time with other people at the conference, you end up learning things that you probably wouldn't have learned otherwise mm -hmm. because you're in that environment where you're there, like you're there because of this event, because of the people that are there. Yeah. Um, to meet people, to learn things from them. Um, Portland's sort of in the middle for me. It's like I grew up here, so mm -hmm. love the city, have a bunch of friends here, but also don't live here anymore. Yeah. Um, but I, I get the feeling that Portlanders are very much willing to go out, spend some time in the evening, especially when it involves a little bit of beer. Mm -hmm. um, like I've, it's very Portland rare. Portland and beer. Yeah, kinda. Portland and beer, Portland startups, Portland and some rain. Yeah. These mm -hmm. things all go together. I mean, we've got beer and blog, we've got startups, we've got rain. Exactly. I mean, beer and blog, it's... Like it's a pretty amazing to me that that group of people gets together on such a regular basis, Every continues Friday. to. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, it's it huge, draws though. like it's, 50, 60 people. Oh, that's more? A, that's a slow night. Wow. That is a slow night okay. now. You get there. I mean, if, I, you know, you get a, if you want to have any actual content, if you want to get any actual uh, help or information mm -hmm. going, you have to show up early, like okay. half an hour before it even starts, so that you can actually find someone to connect with and do the work. Because once you hit, so it starts at four. Once you hit four thirty, five o'clock. It's like singing room. Uh, there are times that it's slower, yeah. but especially during the summer when they open up the back patio or if we have a, you know, a big event. There was one night that I think we had 150 people uh, you know, at any given time mm -hmm. in the room, people coming and going, but it was, it was, it was tight. Yeah. You, well, you, you had to elbow people. <laughs> it was like, hi, I'm just trying to get out the door now, man. Yeah. I need a martini. Can, Lexi, please help, help. me. Yeah. Yeah. But I think that's one of the really good qualities of doing events like this in Portland is that you have that community there mm -hmm. that's used to going out, used to meeting people, used to just like 
talking to each other, learning, sharing, and then you bring an event like this into mm -hmm. town, um, and it's just catalyzed even more. Yeah, I think, well, Portland very much, and Twitter, to a great extent, mm -hmm. had a lot to do with this. Uh, it seems that people here are discontented with just knowing each other online, and the, the actual physical community has become a big big deal of it as well. Yeah, I mean, I remember the original Bar Camp Portland's. Mm -hmm. They were... Like, had, they were some of my favorite bar camps just because of that community feeling and the number of people that would show up that, and not just show up to listen, but show up to actually participate and mm -hmm. present and talk about things. Mm -hmm. um, I, I really do like the Portland technology community. So it's, I'm happy on Friday, we basically get bar camp all day on Friday. I mean, mm -hmm. we get a whole day of, of open, open source uh, unconference. So that'll be good. All right, well, yeah. I'm gonna let you get back to doing okay. the stuff that you do and I'll see you tomorrow night. Yep. We'll Six, find a martini for you. 6.30. Kells will have. Yeah, I'll, Kells will have I'll it. I'll just get yeah. loaded at Kells. I won't get loaded. It's just... Maybe if you come to the roof, then you'll see Cammy loaded. Maybe, afterwards. at the end. Yeah. And then I'm going to get pie. Maybe. Voodoo donuts. Well, it's true, but have you had whiffies? No. David, 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 David. Seriously, you haven't had whiffies? Do you know what whiffies is? Okay, whiffies is a fried pie cart in the food carts on Hawthorne yeah. that's open late. Wow. And Greg, could you please have lemon pies tomorrow night? Lemon, please. So it's like a lemon pie that's fried. That so it's a fr it's a fried hand pie. Yeah. A fried hand pie, and he has all sorts of varieties. He has savory as well as sweet. He also has vegan, and and my favorite is the lemon pie. That sounds pretty amazing. Yeah, it's and he says that there's a new lemon pie. I don't know if this is. I don't know if it's true. I'm okay. gonna, you need to go. Yeah, so, well, I think you'll find us there, like yes. 11, 11.30, Thursday night. Exactly, so 11, 11.30, you can come and join up. We'll just move uh, the startup crawl over there. With you, food carts are startups. Yeah. They are. All right, let's say goodbye to David. Say goodbye to David. Bye. All right, thank you so much for joining yeah, us. Yeah, thank you. Okay. I'm out of Los Angeles. I've been. Oh no, where, where are you from? From well, so you, geographically? No, no. Well, I want you to tell us about the card. The card. Should we start over? Yes, Michael. <laughs> tell us. That won't get edited out, though. It's the way we do the conference interview. Where are you here from? Why are you here? What is the purpose of your okay. trip, of your visit here to yep. OS Branch? Okay, I'm here in Portland. Mm -hmm. I'm with Linux Fund, and Thank we you. have done the credit cards that support open source for a decade. Okay. So most people haven't even been involved in open source for a decade. This is true. That I can say certainly. Some of these people here are not old enough <laughs> to have been involved in open source for a Exactly, decade. and I believe that that sets Linux Fund apart in being one of the few project agnostic foundations mm -hmm. out there. So often a foundation is oriented to a specific project, mm -hmm. and so we take pride in that. We've raised over a million dollars with the card and given away nearly a million dollars, so it's quite so a long-running success. Let's tell them a little bit about what Linux Fund how it got started and what, what is this card, this elusive card of which we speak. The elusive card, and what do I have with me? Let's see, so as you may know, there are plenty of options for airline miles mm -hmm. and support this, support that, mm -hmm. and we've had the Tux card for, well, a decade now, and we're pleased to announce that here during the show we're announcing our Canadian, uh, Canadian card, mm -hmm. which allows Canadian residents to help open source with every purchase, and we just launched a UK corporate card which allows businesses to support open source. We're proud that that's the first corporate card and the first European card. Mm -hmm. So, above all, we support conferences like this, community-oriented mm -hmm. conferences, because that's where we can tell wonderful people about the card. And mm -hmm. the first day here, people were whipping it out to me, and I'm sitting <laughs> Look, at our table like hi. this. <laughs> My work is done here. <laughs> so, Portland's always been a you know, great supporting town of that. Mm -hmm. And there's the, it can snowball, that mm -hmm. the more people discover the card at an event, put their travel on the card, mm -hmm. and when you think of like OzCon coming to town, if all those expenses, all those hotel rooms, flights, for an open source things, conference, went through the card, we'd be the gold sponsor here. Yeah. So we help out O'Reilly as a small media partner, however, here we really want to be a financial partner, because you know, this is where the wheels hit the pavement in the community. Yeah get people away from the terminal, get them face to face, mm -hmm. and get you know, decisions made. So mm -hmm. I think events are just critical. Mm -hmm. So you were not in Portland last year, but were you guys involved uh, with Open Source Bridge last year? We were. Our executive director, David Mandel, spoke last year. Okay. He talked about open source and agriculture, which mm -hmm. is quite cool. Mm -hmm. It was 
uh, educational to yeah. watch the organizers sort of find their voice and get mm -hmm. organized. And mm -hmm. it's great to see that this year's event is just so, so much more polished and smooth running. I'm and amazed. I actually, I think for, for an initial experience, they did very well last year. They did year. very well. They did very well. But By this, all accounts, they pulled I think together this is, at the last minute. I think this is also a, a more, uh, I think this is a friendlier space for this kind of conference. I'd say this is the classiest event venue I've seen yet in this community. It's, and yeah. I've done a lot of European events, and this rocks. So yeah. it's, it's a new level, a new bar that others will be compared to. And I think that's very unique about Open Source Bridge. I, I'm, I was very excited. Well, initially, when I heard, OK, you guys want to come back and do your show? We're going to be at the Portland Art Museum. I was like, what? <laughs> How's that going to work? Where, exactly. Where are you? I don't understand. And when we got to come and check out the space, I was just like, oh, wow, this is a really good idea. When the Hacker Lounge is a library, I it's know. just it's a, a really classy traditional. Yeah. I mean, I hope you're getting some video over on the venue. Yeah. It's really classy. It's really fantastic. But we agree on that. Yeah, um. <laughs> it's doing very, very well. You guys are also premiering some other stuff here. OK. So speaking of community conferences, mm -hmm. based on my last exhausting few years of conference attendance, mm -hmm. I have assembled and am debuting here the vest. The vest. Now, it's an old army vest of sorts. It, it looks like you're going to go on safari. On safari, exactly. So some headache medicine, virus protection, oh. above all, video adapters. Mm -hmm. I'm glad to see that the speaker's lounge had quite a few. Yeah. You've got your small tool kits if you need to I swap carry, how to drive, I which I've certainly seen. I carry a Leatherman with me because that's more... True, those little Torx connectors, a bit of a pain. Mm -hmm. Still, yeah. Got your screen wipes, got mm -hmm. your grounding straps if you need them, lots mm -hmm. of little tools for those smaller screws. Very got prepared. some cables, USB, got some USB Ethernet. At the last conference I was at, someone's network interface died. Like, you know, oh, normally when I go line. to places, people look for me because I'm a mom, so they just assume I'm going to carry everything, whether, the whether it's a mom thing or not. But I'm just going to start looking for guys with vests. Cool, <laughs> indeed. So yeah. it's growing and growing, and a little promotional Intel wireless mouse. I'm willing to make that complimentary if you need a mouse. A <laughs> uh, whole lot of things as a father, yep. I mm -hmm. understand what yeah. can be needed out there. Mm -hmm. And in this day and age, you know, I've got a blue Yeti that'll have its own little pouch for if mm -hmm. you really, you know, you're caught off guard and it was mm -hmm. a third person at the, the presentation. What Cables what up is, the wazoo. What is that? That is a promotional it's a Terra USB. Grid USB uh, hub. I thought it was a chew toy for Indeed. a moment. I was like, um, okay. Got some earbuds and lots of just fun stuff, but pretty important stuff at an event. And you know, it's <laughs> great that here it's in shiny here. Sorry. It's shiny. It's great that here in town one can you know, run to a local store, run yeah. fries, but often. All the conferences some, are in the middle of nowhere. Exactly. So yeah. Be prepared. So very, yeah. Very nice. It's a fun one and looking for a few donations of maybe flash sticks and other neat stuff we can equip it with and just mm -hmm. really have it as a useful resource and maybe multiple vests out at different conferences. That's a very good you idea. Know, Always prepared. Were you a Boy Scout? I wasn't, but like I said, I'm a father <laughs> and, and a geek. But what's funny in this community is that so little can go so far. So mm -hmm. if you renew the domain name of a project, that's a that can be a big investment yes. in that project. Because sometimes that project is it's li it's likely a side project. Yep, and it may take it to that next level. And mm -hmm. you know that's core branding, and there might be a battle over that name later. And it's mm -hmm. just it's it's simple stuff like that, and just the right video adapter at the right time is. Really handy. Mm -hmm. Or a mouse so, you know, or a mouse, USB yeah. adapter. At O'Reilly last year, someone dropped a drink on a MacBook, needed to give their presentation a short minute. They're mm -hmm. all the same, pulled out the hard drive, dropped it in someone else's loaner, and made their presentation. It's as, there you go. as simple as that. Calm and happy. So, you and I talked very briefly before about the difference between OSCON. So, OS Bridge oh, yeah. started primarily because we lost OSCON exactly. last year. It was the first year that we weren't going to be having an open source conference. And Portland, if you're not aware, is huge with open source. We're teaming with open source citizens. We're everywhere. Even if you don't understand open source software, open source programming, yep. big deal here in Portland. Also, we love WordPress. I'm just saying. Um, and so when Selena and Audrey had already thought about the conference, it just kind of got kicked into high gear and it was, oh, it's, it's time. We have to do this because we don't have a conference. But this year, because they're smart, they've, DOSCON has decided to come back to Portland. 
Indeed. And so having, having, what do you think, having attended this and having attended OSCONS, what do you think is the primary difference between the two conferences? This was always promised to be more developer oriented mm -hmm. and you know, the, the vendor hall is literally a hall with two tables, yeah. <laughs> which is good. You know, yeah. It's different. A bit frustrating as a sponsor because we're accustomed to this sort of package. Although it but is on the way to the bathroom, so everyone that's will see. Captive audience. Yeah. <laughs> Very classy. Um, okay. Linux Fund wants to help maintain Portland as the capital of open source in America. Mm -hmm. And the more the merrier across the board. Yeah. So we are only concerned, and I personally, mm -hmm. about the potential conflict in theme, which they've been very good about distinguishing, mm -hmm. and in these tough times, travel budgets. Mm, so yeah. it's a question of, I hear some people saying it's great that they're close together because they can attend on the same visa, mm -hmm. or oh, please keep them three months apart so that we can you know, justify different yeah. travel to the Northwest. So yeah. they're definitely surviving those potential conflicts there. and. and I think it's great to see that people came together almost instinctively. Mm -hmm. OASCON left. Well, where's the conference? Here, right now. It's, let's just, it's, it yeah. is, you know, for the home of unconferences, mm -hmm. it is a perfect natural next step from we, there. We do keep the unconference alive, though. The last day is, is entirely perfect. unconference. It's a, a full unconference schedule. So, Unscheduled. I think it's very much a good thing that both events are in town. Yeah. The O'Reilly people are great to work with, and I talked to them recently at the MySQL event, and mm -hmm. their position is fundamentally, it's all good. Yeah. I'm not sure if there are any media partnerships I think you the have two. to. I think you have to be it's all good if you're open source. I mean, I know, it's kind of the there mentality. Are those people in organizations who don't do that. And <laughs> That's it's true. It's awkward, and, yeah. and you know who you are. Stop it. Just, Stop just it. knock it off. Be nice, please. It would be better is, if you were nice. Uh, how do I put this? Um, there is direct feedback and funding and such and reciprocal mm -hmm. benefit. And yeah. just trust that there is reciprocal benefit, even if the license doesn't force you to give the code back, but maybe your company supports an event like this. Mm -hmm. It's all good. Yeah. So anyway, that's a little so few what, words on that. what have you been most impressed? What has impressed upon you the most in your two days here? Because we're 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 nearing the end of of day two. Okay. It's my third day, but still, um, not, you know. As a local parent, it's been a challenge with most conferences. Mm -hmm. I just I'm there 24 hours a day, no yeah. sleep, and it's great. Yeah. Here, run home, take the kid to dance class, come on back. Yeah. So. From the minute I walked in, I looked at the schedule, saw a thing on GEDA, mm -hmm. and we have a project to make the PCB component. The, it's all about designing little uh, circuit boards. Mm -hmm. It's all open source to make that more user friendly, so it mm -hmm. gets in more schools and mm -hmm. such. So, first, there's a talk on it, and I hadn't even looked at the schedule. I don't look at conference schedules anymore. You need to talk to the open source education guys too. I'll Perfect. Remind me later so, to give you their names. Sorry. It's just at the end side. of that. Talk to the speaker. Oh, he's in Vancouver. That's mm -hmm. cool. Talk to the most uh, active question askers in the audience. Mm -hmm. Well, they're part of PSU doing the rocketry, rocketry program. Mm -hmm. You've probably heard of that. Mm -hmm. Well, they Open want to use rocket. this. They don't have the experience on that tool, mm -hmm. but suddenly, we're, we, within a few minutes, we agreed we need an open hardware boff during this event, mm -hmm. and we'll most likely have an ongoing Portland open hardware meeting. Mm -hmm. And that all happened in the first half hour, showing up late to the event. So mm -hmm. right off the bat, from the moment I went through, across the marble floor mm -hmm. right there, it's like, okay, this is... People are really Real willing to get their hands dirty. hardcore topics. Yeah. And so often a conference can attract the marketing team. Mm -hmm. And they give the standard spiel about any given yeah. tool which now has a company behind it. And yes, they'd like you to sign up. And yeah. they give you free swag. But I was impressed how quickly we got our feet wet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's so, pretty Portland diving. Right? Now, you're... Portland based, but you've been gone. You haven't been I've been in gone. Portland. I've been away and I'm rediscovering Portland and I've come back to some very, very cool things. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, so we've got Linus Torvalds, and that's mm -hmm. a good start. <laughs> we've got this nifty clear network, Wi Fi, WiMAX, and all that throughout Which town. Which is sometimes so reliable. It's like sometimes reliable. <laughs> we've got some people using my little overdrive over at the Mozilla table right now mm -hmm. for want of the, the on site network having a hiccup. So that's cool. Mm hmm. Um, Caligator, 
Yeah, Caligator is awesome. that you start awesome. every show with Caligator. Caligator like, is If you don't awesome. know about it, go check out Caligator no. and the awesome people Caligator. behind it who are putting on this event and mm -hmm. its software. Yes, so, Audrey is the Caligator girl. Exactly. Yeah. If you don't know what it is, dear audience, basically one-stop shopping for the ongoing events in Portland. So mm -hmm. if, if you're free one evening, go right on there and find out you'll that find there's exactly. something you'll awesome going You'll find out that you're on. not actually free that evening. You just didn't know yet. You weren't aware. And now you know. Portland is so active that there There's, are conflicts. It's like, yeah. I need to be on both sides of the river yeah. at the same there time. There are always like a lot of things going unbelievable. on. Unbelievable. So that is awesome. And coming back to this event, you know, I've been in Europe for eight years. Mm -hmm. um, now is the time to rediscover it with a bit of an objective, somewhat European perspective, just to mm -hmm. not see the community I left 10 years ago yeah. where it was the, all the same faces. Yeah. Now there are a lot of neat people coming in and thanks to well, thanks to OzCon moving to Portland. Yeah. Uh, Luke Kinney's from Puppet Labs. Mm -hmm. uh, in from Puppet Labs is now something else. Well, it was it was another name before that. <laughs> no, Puppet Labs has changed to something. It was they, Reductive Labs, and it became Puppet, I believe. Hmm. I could be wrong. I think it's. I believe it's else. Reductive. Hmm. So to hmm. you know, see talent coming into yeah. town, you know. When Starvalds himself was yeah. a good example of, well, okay, yeah. <laughs> uh, let's put Portland on the map and let's keep it on the map. And just I'll emphasize the point: having OS Bridge, if it's sustainable with exactly what I see here, mm -hmm. great. All all volunteer Excellent. run, good stuff. Very good. Before you go, I want you to tell us uh, your Twitter name. My. Identica and Twitter yeah, handles are Michael Dexter, yes, along both. with Linux Fund and BSD Fund. Okay. And what is the one thing that you're looking forward to for the rest of the week for this conference? Do you know? I, I wanted to say, like, this Oh, boy. I know. It's hard. <laughs> There's a talk I wanted to go to yesterday um, that was rescheduled, so sun, I don't know the answer. I must confess it's been rainy. It has been rainy. That's but what Portland's all about. I hope to leave <laughs> here with a to-do list of just what community groups like that open hardware group can mm -hmm. just come together logically and painlessly without you know competing for schedules without competing for time just make it happen it just that's what's so awesome here I right. see more of that all right well thank you so much for joining it's us it's been a pleasure say goodbye thank you so much bye of interest in the last month or so with some uh, projects like diaspora um, that is that are taking on this issue of a federated social web so what I spoke about here um, at open source bridge is about uh, you know the different projects who's working on uh, federated social webs and the technologies that we're using to uh, bring them together so, very cool yeah. so do you find that that then the more I mean because something that you mentioned was being able to localize things sure um, so it's a actually you want to talk about big corporations it's actually a safer way for them to do it because then they can have an internal system for that exactly exactly so they can set up their own internal systems and that's driving a lot of the interest in these kind of things uh, social messaging and social networking is really getting a lot of pickup inside the enterprise mm -hmm. people love so they're um, allowed to have it, it, I mean it, it doesn't have to be necessarily more open it can be much more private it can be much more private and that's really up to you and that's one of the great things about open source software is that you get to make a choice on this spectrum you know mm -hmm. where do you want to be, um, where do you want to, uh, how much information you want to share, who do you want to share it with, um, the people that own the site make those decisions and mm -hmm. so if you own your own site you're the one in control of making those decisions. So as a company or as an individual you get to make those, uh, make decisions about those uh, policies. Yeah. yeah. You were at um, OS Bridge last year too, right? I was, I was. I spoke about, uh, I, I spoke about our software last year mm -hmm. and uh, it was great. I, yeah. I really loved it. So when I um, heard about this year I was, I was really excited and got my application in really quick to, to cool. speak. Yeah. Very yeah. Cool. Um, Is it going as well this Year. Actually, I actually think it's going a little better this year. I love the uh, art. I love the venue. Yeah, yeah, the venue's really nice. I think the uh, uh, because we were at the convention center last year, yeah. which was a little bit, it, it was a little bit too big. Like it was hard to get from space to space. Mm -hmm. And you know, and I then think the it was, hacker lounge was in. Yeah, the, and the other hacker side of the lounge river. was yeah across the river. It was like near the hotel, so people who are local like weren't, weren't as uh, mm -hmm. as easy access to it. Um, you know, we can like knock down. I mean, it was a great it was conference. Great. It was. It, 
I, I, you talk it's to other people who, yeah, yeah. You yeah. talk to other people who were who were there, and everyone just like, boy, that was a great conference. And you yeah. know, when I talk to the other speakers who are coming from out of town, they're like, this is a great place to be. So, yeah. um, I think we're all really into Open Source Bridge, and I just love the the community organized aspect. I mean, the people who are here, like Portland is a really special city as far as its tech scene, and that really comes through in events like like Open Source Bridge. Yeah, yeah. everybody loves what they're doing, and I think it, yeah. it shows. Yeah, you know, and everybody supports each other. There's a really nice, like, you know, uh, a mesh of people who are doing, like, good work and, and helping each other out, and I think that's one of the things that, that every city should, you know, see and, and try and model. Yeah. yeah, I'm not gonna disagree with you on that one. I think that's a good place to end it. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, thanks a lot. Really well, I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, next year's Open Source Bridge. You right, know, where, keeping my fingers where crossed. Where can they find you? Send them to a website? Uh, yeah, so uh, our software is available at status.net. Mm -hmm. um, we have a large site called Identica that uh, is, a, is very popular with open source uh, people. It's identi, I D E N T I dot C A, Identica. Uh, and uh, you can check uh, check out more about uh, 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 our software there. You can also follow me on evan.status.net. That's my personal StatusNet site, and people can follow me um, there. All right, great. great. Thank you, Evan. Well, thank you very much. It's good to see you again. Yeah, good seeing you too again. <laughs>is on your desk, for example. So the options are uh, virtualization as well as uh, a cloud offering. And that's what Sauce Labs provides is a cloud offering. Mm -hmm. So you can just call up as many different browsers or as many different operating systems, send all your tests to the cloud at Sauce Labs, and be able to run these tests quickly and effectively. That's very cool. And so his, he gave the talk on that, and now the rest of it is just you guys hanging out, attending sessions. We're gonna do uh, we're gonna do a birds of a feather okay. tonight. So okay. um, what, the birds is it six? Seven o'clock. Seven o'clock. Yeah. I don't know what time these things yeah. start. About testing. So just listening to how people are doing testing, any pains that they're having. Mm -hmm. um, you know, talk a little bit about what Sauce Labs is doing. You know, we recently launched a uh, a solution for Flash and Flex applications, which mm -hmm. has traditionally been very difficult to test. Yeah. Um, so we're going to talk about that tonight as well. Uh, have you so have you been to a conference in Portland before? Never, I've never been to Portland. So, oh, this is your first time in Portland? It's, I've been taking pictures. This park is beautiful out here. That is a good park. The, uh, we, have, we have better parks, so that's a good one. The food carts, mm -hmm. uh, the farmer's market was amazing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, just having a great time. Have you, so a big in Portland conference, even the scheduled conferences are the unconferences. Have mm -hmm. you experienced the unconference experience? Um, not, not yet, no, okay. no. On Friday? The entire day. So yesterday, today, tomorrow. Sell me. All scheduled. Okay. Okay. But on Friday, what we do is, and we have entire conferences in Portland that are based on this. We have entire conferences that are completely unconference. And sure. you come in, you have a giant board with really large post-its right. usually, and you put in your unconference session, session and, and everyone gets to do whatever they're doing that day. Right. And that way, the, the attendees are really, really controlling what's going on in the content. I love it. Yeah, so we have an entire day of that at, at, at OS Bridge. Another opportunity for us to talk about testing and uh, ways to do it more effectively. And another good opportunity for you guys to make you know, more connections with yeah. what, who's doing what. Yeah. Because that's where everyone not only brings in what they're doing, but what it is that they're passionate about as well. So very, cool. very cool. There's a lot of passion in this building. There is a lot of passion in this building. <laughs> the people here, yeah. yeah, they love what they're doing. And that's the thing that I find interesting about uh, open source, is that you don't usually have a lot of people in open source mm -hmm. that are like, it's okay. Yeah. It's yeah. Open no. Open source. No, it's, it's lifestyle. Yeah. 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 Very cool. All right. Well, Alex, it was really good to meet you. you really as good well. to talk to you. Thank, Thank you, you very so much. much. Great. All right. Thank you, Cody. Sort of. Yeah. That's right. You know, I, I, there is not a single uh, open source project, open source company that I think people look at more, and like with like curious wonder and adoration. <laughs> Then well, WordPress. Thank you. I mean, people are just like, oh, especially in Portland. But people are like, it's WordPress. I mean, what other? What has its very own conference? Drupal I mean, has DrupalCon. Joomla has one. Not fun. Well, you know, WordPress. I don't know. I, DrupalCons I, are pretty fun. I haven't aren't been they? to DrupalCon. I haven't been to it either, I but I yeah. heard it was fun. Yeah, I'm making. I think stuff our up. parties might be better though. Yeah. Yeah. Our yeah. after parties are pretty good usually. Yeah, they are. So, how many different places have WordCamp? Um, gosh, they are all over the world. Yeah. Um, 
I want to say every continent except Antarctica, yeah. honestly. Um, and Cause that would be a hard one for attendance. Yeah. People keep saying, let's do one. I'm like, that's just, a, no, no, <laughs> that's just a gimmick. Um, but yeah, I think there have already been like 50 this mm -hmm. year in the, in the U S and, mm -hmm. um, the year's not even half over. No, it's not. So, I mean, I've been to 25 mm -hmm. since I started working with WordPress. How long have you been with WordPress? Since the summer of 2008, yeah. so that's almost two years. So that's 25 just WordCamp conferences. Yes. Then you add in other stuff like OS Bridge. Mm -hmm. uh, a few of those, not as many. But yeah. Yeah. Folks, I'm busy. Well, yeah, <laughs> I have to design it in the meantime. As you were just saying, when you come to a conference, you actually get to go to the conference all day, but then you have to go back to your hotel room and work yeah. because you have to make up for what you're not doing. Yeah, because it's a community development project and people are all over the world, so time zones, you know, they. If I'm working at five in the morning so I can be dealing with the guys who live in England or France, or if I'm working at midnight so I can talk to the guys in Japan or yeah. Australia, I mean, it really doesn't matter what time it is, there's work I can always be doing. Yeah. And going to a conference, you lose two days to travel, and then the time at the conference, and then you go to dinner with people so you can you know, get to know them. And mm -hmm. especially for me, I mostly meet users mm -hmm. and developers and kind of hear their feedback and the things they find problematic so I can help try to fix them. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a lot going on. <laughs> so you're not speaking. You're just no, hanging out. No, it's so fun. It's the is first it, time in like say, two it years. It seems really unusual for you. I know. I, I'm loving it. I have yeah. no responsibilities at all. Just Even South by Southwest, I didn't speak at this year, but mm -hmm. I'm on the advisory board, so mm -hmm. I'm always paying a lot more attention to things than I would if I was just attending. And so the so one thing I, I missed, I didn't get to go to the South by Southwest barbecue. Oh, or yeah. To the, to the work, because I actually yeah. sprained my ankle that morning. Right. And I was like... I know I missed you guys. Mm, I'm not there. No. It was, yeah. Yeah. It was fun. We had a big cake with a OMG BBQ on it. Oh, <laughs> so. that is so cute. Yeah. That is so cute. So yeah, this is really the first time in two years of conferencing that you've been able to just attend sessions, hang out. I, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, no, there was one. I went to a Future of Web Design in New York last year, but that that's short, and it wasn't very open sourcey, so it was just kind of design oriented. So, what are you looking forward to? And we, this is almost today's almost done. Yeah, we've got two days left. We've mm -hmm. got the Thursday full conference day, and then we've got the unconference day on Friday. Mm -hmm. What are you looking forward to? Um, I'm actually looking forward to a panel or a session rather later this day mm -hmm. that is about foundations and nonprofits mm -hmm. and open source because mm -hmm. we're doing some new stuff in WordPress with the WordPress Foundation, which is pretty new. So. Yeah. Um, I'm hoping to learn some things there that can help guide the work that we're going to be doing over the course of the year. Very, very cool. Yeah, we're planning on creating some like open source learning materials mm -hmm. so people can learn how to use and develop for WordPress and or conduct their own trainings and sort of work from official materials so that we don't have people running. I mean, people can run workshops however yeah. they want to, obviously, but if they wanted to know for sure they're teaching people the right things that are you know sort of core approved as you know these are so the coding they, standards. They don't have to go and unlearn something to, to learn the right way. Yeah, and you know, they can make sure they're passing on official information and for people who are looking for trainings, they can look and say, oh, they're using the official, you know, WordPress.org provided whatever and we can use foundation money to pay for the process, so that'll be cool, I think. I hope. It's, I'm it hoping be it'll good. be cool. We'll see. It'll be good. It's I an experiment know. like everything yeah. in open source. It very much is. Well, I'm going to let you, because I think it's going to start pretty soon. Though. Yeah, it kind of looks so. like it. So, uh, tell everyone where they can find you. Uh, jane.wordpress.com or jane for short on Twitter, um, but usually on the WordPress blog at wordpress.org slash development. All right. Thank you so much, Jane. Yeah, no problem. See you tomorrow. See ya.